for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Every NBA-only entry is profit-boosted on Underdog for NBA opening week, so make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog app. Use code MACECAM or STAT to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash with your first deposit and a free pick. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, man? What's good, Murder, how you, man? Doing well, man. Yeah, I that's can't call up. it. That's what's up, man. Right here. We were just talking about before, before we got on the screen, and a lot of New Yorkers might know about Riverside Church, man. You, you knew Mr. Lloyd was molesting people? Um, I kind of figured that, you know, the people, the people that he, he probably really had fun with, they went to Catholic school. Yeah. So that's what I was figuring. See, the thing about <laughs> it for people that don't know, Riverside was a big <laughs> basketball program. And we went to public school. <laughs> yeah. It was a big basketball program. And Mr. Lloyd was molesting the players. <laughs> and his favorites went to Catholic school. <laughs> we wasn't one of his favorites. He <laughs> <laughs> went to Old Hollows. You Talent, get to go. You lo- he loved you. You went to Talent Time. Yeah, you was his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> St. <Saint> Raymond's. <laughs> He was creme de la creme. Yeah, he was creme de la creme. <laughs> talent, the talent, 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 no hollow <laughs> St. Ramos, he loved you. <laughs> so about Mr. Lloyd, you gave me money. I said, what you do for it? <laughs> <laughs> now I know why I never got sneakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, me, I never got none of that. Niggas talking about Mr. Lloyd's to Kim. And listen, let me tell you something. Glad to get mad at us. Glad, I don't care. I, if I see something slick, I'm going to call you out. Because you know what you did for them sneakers. <laughs> and that $300. <laughs> oh, I wonder why it was so hard for us to go to five-star camp. Yeah, we never got the benefits of any, any of that. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you a true story. Oh, man. man. I'm going to tell you a true story. And I'm not going to put this on the people that I'm naming. I'm just telling you what happened. One day I asked Mr. Lloyd for some money when I played for Riverside. So he was like, all right, meet me at Riverside. At, at 4 30, practice is 7 30. <laughs> I said, I said, I ain't bet. I go up there, nigga. He got me in the locker room, just me and him, and he pacing back and forth, and he like, all the best players need discipline once in a while. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? He said, sometimes they need to get spanked. And I'm not putting this on these play, I'm just telling you the name. He said, you know, Brian Reese, Adrian Audrey, the best of them. <laughs> Sometimes they need discipline. I say, yo, Mr. Lloyd, stop playing games with me, man. Move, out, move the fuck out of my way. So I, play, I walk right out. Fuck the sneakers. I never went back to practice. That's why I go back to Young Life. <laughs> Counselors wasn't taking me back after I left them niggas. I said, like, fuck you mean need discipline? They gonna throw my niggas Adrian Audrey and Brian Reese under the bus. I said, man, I ain't putting that on y'all. I'm just telling you the names you use because at that time, they were like D1, yeah. like, you know, Adrian Ortree went to Red, Syracuse. Yeah, Red was like one of my favorite Yeah, niggas, point boy. guards, and then Brian Reese was in North Carolina, and mm-hmm. then I'm just, like, junior high school, about to go to high school, you talking about discipline. Yeah, all right, nigga. I guess I won't be going to none of them <laughs> schools, and I guess I'm going to figure out how to get my own sneakers on my own time. I ain't going to call out the people my age, but. Niggas went to Lachlan and all <laughs> <laughs> now, when the story came out, I was like, man, that's why I never went to Catholic school. Yeah, man. I always wondered that. Yeah, yeah, man. And at that time, to be totally honest with you, I'm going to give Stephon Marbury, and I'm telling and it was a lot of great players before Stephon Marbury, super, a lot, lot more players before Stephon Marbury. But 
during my era for me, he kind of brought a lot of light to public school because they was expecting him to go to all the schools we just named. And he, yeah. you know, well, probably the ones in Brooklyn that he chose to go to public school and he already had uh, all these scouts and people watching him. But you know what Steph had? Steph had big brothers that wasn't having that shit. Yeah. <laughs> all that touching niggas to go to school and all that. Listen. Yeah. Sorry about, we just was talking about it. Thought we'd bring it up real quick. Okay. What Great you heard story. about it, White, when you was coming up? I went to Julia Richmond, <laughs> A. Philip Randolph, but like you said, man, Ernie. Yeah, man. You want you want a scholarship? Don't go on the road <laughs> trip. So let's see. <laughs> they can talk about they can talk about yo, you gonna be Mr. Little Lad. <laughs> no. nah, man. I stay with Ron Carlos, man. I'm in the sink. I ain't go. doing none of that. Uh P my nigga Ron, man. Yeah. Sure. Hey. Today we are joined with sports analyst Arabia. Arabia, how you feeling today? Hi, feeling great. Thank you for having me. Of course. Real quick, you were saying behind the scenes that you're from D.C. Where are you from exactly, just for people watching? Yeah, so I'm from Northeast. It's a neighborhood called Brooklyn um, in the Catholic University area. So I was born and raised there. Okay, so just for okay. the viewers watching, yeah. Okay, so let's get into football. The Ravens had a great win versus the Bucks with a 41 to 31 win. However, Tampa Bay took a big loss after Mike Evans had to leave the game with a hamstring injury. And Chris Godwin went down with a leg injury in the final seconds. Arabia, at this point, how do you feel about both teams? Yeah, so coming into this game, I wanted to see how the momentum would swing. The Bucks were coming off of scoring 51 points against their division mate, the Saints. The Ravens were coming off a four-game winning streak. The Ravens were the number one scoring offense in the NFL. They were averaging 450 total yards per game. These are the number three and number four scoring offenses in, in the NFL. So I wanted to see where that momentum would go. The good news for the Bucks is that Rashad White was back. That was great. They also had Vita Vea back. But it's almost like getting Rashad White back and Vita Vea sacrificed Chris Godwin and also Mike Evans. So it's a huge, huge hit in that receiver room. And it's one of those injury situations where it really could change the direct trajectory of their season, especially now that their division is pretty close at number one and number two. You really can't afford any injuries when it's that close of a race. And kind of the same for the Ravens with a big hit with Marlon Humphrey down. He got two interceptions and unfortunately had to exit the game with a knee injury. So I think it's a really big hit. That's a huge one-two punch in the receiver room. Thankfully, they do have Bucky Irving. They do have Sean Turner. They do have Rashad White back. If that air game isn't really working, they can hit the ground. It is possible. But there's no way that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin go out of this game and they don't feel the effects of that. Yeah, I really, I really think for me, it just boiled down to that second interception. That second interception set up that monster play for them. And I think they really don't look back after that. When you think of the Bucks, I was expecting them to play well. And and this is just what happens when good meets great. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people are doing good and you think they're great until they're up against someone great. And that's what I would sum this up when I'm looking at um, Mayfield and he runs into Lamar Jackson. It was, he wasn't supposed to do anything different than what happened. That was what's supposed to happen because good met great. And that's exactly what happened. You look at this this Bucks team. This is a good team with a good quarterback. And you look at um, the, the Ravens. That's a great team with a great quarterback. And when you put these two together, eventually great players win games. You know, that's, that's what happens. If you put great players on a team with a great coach, they're going to win. And uh, as simple as that sounds, sometimes winning is that simple. Sometimes when I'm speaking, people be like, oh, you just make it seem so simple. Hits are simple. Winning is simple. Success is simple. You stick with the basics. You're doing very well. And you turn out very well. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of things I took away from this game. Like I said, Baltimore is balling. Mm -hmm. I've been saying that the last couple of weeks. There's actually one of the teams that I said I wasn't really concerned about when they started off 0-2. I thought that they would uh, pick it up as the season went along because uh, 
They got a good core, a good coach. Tampa Bay had a lot of missed opportunities as well. You know, Baker Mayfield, he throws for a touchdown. They bring him back for a holding call on the offensive line. Mike Evans, he had the ball in his hands. He drops the ball for a, foot, for a touchdown, but he also got injured on the play. Offensive face mask on Baker Mayfield when they could have had a first down. Um, missed field goals. Uh, they had several opportunities, especially in the red zone, that they didn't capitalize off. But this game was essentially over to me in the third quarter. Uh, they scored 21 points in the fourth quarter, and that's the two things that I want to talk about. First is that this game was not as close as it seems, but Baltimore defense that I've been on talking about, y'all, since the beginning of the season, we see what this offense can do. But even though the game was over, you can't let them just score 21 points in the third quarter. I also, you know, we was asking Michael um, Irvin about the onside kick, so they do let them know about an onside kick because actually Tampa Bay did an onside kick and got the ball back, so special teams was lacking. Yeah. And they go down and score another touchdown. We know the game was over Baltimore, but you got to stay on top of, uh, of the game. You know, I know the niggas who was betting is pissed off because I'm not, you know, I only bet with underdog, but I'm just saying you got to realize y'all niggas is up by 31 points or 30-something points, and then you let them in lose by 10 because y'all are slacking on defense and slacking on special teams. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. I do want to give a big shout out to uh, Derrick Henry who look fucking like a monster again, not only just scoring on the ground, scoring in the air. Now, if you get a dude back in Derrick Henry to where you're passing him the ball as well for touchdowns or yards or yak, it's Baltimore is dangerous. They look like the most explosive team in the NFL right now as far as offense is concerned. Um, that's first. Secondly, uh, to Tampa Bay, Todd, Todd Bowles, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing, bro? You lose Mike Evans early in the game. We know that you, look, I'm one of them niggas to play till the time goes off the clock. You know damn well you gonna lose this game. Why do you got Chris Godwin in the game with less than two minutes left and y'all down 10 points and you're on your own 20 yard line with no timeouts, maybe one timeout left. What are you doing, my nigga? Now it costs you, cause that injury, they didn't even wanna show it on replay. It was like, yeah. they was like, yo, Nah, we not showing this again. So potentially he's out for the season, but why would you have him in the game? Did you think y'all was going to keep getting onside kicks? You think he was going to recover three onside kicks? Let's be realistic. You got one. You thought you was going to do it again? And then after you did it again, you thought you were going to do it again. You have to have three onside kicks to win that game in less than five minutes, and this kid gets hurt in less than two minutes. He shouldn't have been in the game. I know you feel like shit. I didn't see your shit after the game. Yep, your post-game interview, but I know they're going to ask you that. Why was he in the game? Why was, and I'm asking you from here, why would you have Chris Godwin in the game with less than two minutes left, no timeouts, on your own 20-yard line, down by 10 points, and Mike Evans just got hurt? Now you're going to pay. Now you're going to pay. Yeah, this, this Baltimore team, they, they've been rolling all season. I mean, even from those first two games, it's, it just seemed like even though they were losing, they were putting up these certain amount of yards just every game that just came into being consistent. Like, even through these seven games, they, they've been up with, like, what, 1,400, 1,400 or so yards just in passing. So it just seemed like they're, 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 they're very explosive, like you said, pause killer. Yeah, man. I'm, I also I'm, wanted to yeah. shout out um, Mark Andrews. You shouted out Derrick Henry, who, by the way, reached a top speed of close to 22 miles per hour on one of those runs. He's like a running back in a linebacker's body. It's very impressive. But also shout out to Mark Andrews. He now has the most receiving touchdowns in Ravens franchise history with 42. He officially passed his tight end tie heap in that. And also, I'm glad you mentioned the, all, the onside kick because you asked Maurice about it and you asked Uncle Mike about it. But for the onside kick, the play itself is performed the same, but there are three stipulations now in 2024. The first one is it has to happen in the fourth quarter. The second thing is you have to be trailing. You can't do the onside kick if you're winning. And the third is, of course, you have to declare. And so we saw that today with the Bucks behind in the fourth quarter saying that they were going to do it. Look at that. We got the fucking facts from Arabia. <laughs> Mike couldn't give us the facts. Maurice couldn't give us the facts. That's why I fuck with you, man. That's why you here, man. 
we finally got some info on how this actually works. Thank you for sharing that, because I've been asking niggas for two weeks and been getting the fucking run around. So thank you. I appreciate you giving me the answer to what I've been asking from professional athletes, Hall of Famers, Super Bowl champions, college champions. And thank you. It took Arabia to give me the answer that I needed, man. But um, I'm more mad at Todd Bowles, and I'm really, really impressed with Derrick Henry. He almost 200 grand. 200 yards total because he had 13 yards catching 160 something on the ground. I know niggas is pissed off because it's a lot of teams that didn't call Derrick Henry. Because, you know, when you're 30 years old, you have, as a running back, your career is supposed to be almost over, et cetera, et cetera. And niggas didn't call that nigga. And you know who he said he was waiting to call him? You know where his offseason house is when he's not playing? In Dallas. <laughs> the Cowboys. He lives in Dallas when he's not, when he's not playing professional football, and the Cowboys did not call them. Mm -mm -mm. Shame on y'all, baby. Shame mm -mm -mm. on y'all. Crazy. Okay, now we got to talk about the Lions. We did not forget about y'all. The Lions hand the Vikings their first loss of the season and take the first spot in the NFC North. This is without Aiden Hutchinson. So, Arabia, what did you think of the way the game played out? Well, first of all, the NFC North is by far the best division in football. The Bears are four and two and are at the bottom of that division. The Packers are five and two and are third in the division. In any other division in the NFL, except for the AFC West with the six and no Chiefs there. But in any other division in the NFL, a five and two record pretty much gets you in first place, but not in the NFC North. So it's a huge testament to this game and what it means, not just being a division game, but a division game within the best division in the NFL. The Lions got their fourth straight win against the Vikings, which is the longest streak since the 60s. I think it was a huge game, not just for the players, Players, but also just showing exactly who Ben Johnson is during the offseason where there was that coaching carousel and it was like the Falcons, the Seahawks, the commanders, certain teams that were looking for a head coach. Offensive coordinator for the Lions, Ben Johnson's phone was going off the hook. And this is exactly why the Vikings sent blitz after blitz after blitz. But Ben Johnson really schemed Jared Goff up in a way where it didn't really affect him. It was both the scheme and Jared Goff's execution of the scheme that really didn't have that Vikings blitz heavy system really affect him. So I think they did a really good job speaking this win out. Um, it was another good thing, it's which, which is why it makes the Lions so dangerous. David Montgomery got a little banged up. He ended up coming out of the game, but coming back into the game. But that's okay because Jameer Gibbs is right there. He performed very well. Amin Ross St. Brown had a really good game. Jared Goff was this close from getting the record for three straight consecutive games at 150 passer rating. He got 140 passer rating. So pretty much all phases of the football. Once again, shout out to special teams because kicker Jake Bates is 10 for 10 with field goals. He was kind of the reason towards the end of the game why they were able to win the game. He's from the UFL, the Michigan Panthers. He came in, kicked the field goal. He's been doing perfectly this season. So it was really three phases of football that really showed up. And that's exactly what you want to see in a special division game like this, heading the Vikings their first loss of the season. Yeah, I think both both teams play pretty good, but when it when it comes down to it, again, um, it's one of those things where where Detroit is on a roll, they're trying to get back to where they should have been last year. They made a lot of um, few mistakes that that cost them that postseason. Even when a coach shows the goal for it, so it, it looks like they're making a lot of the changes that they need to make. But I'm still not convinced. No matter what Arabia just said, I'm still not convinced. Detroit does this every not every year for the last year or so. They always look good until it really counts. This is not where it really counts. It's where it really counts in in regular season, but we're not holding the Detroit to anything regular season-wise. We will only be able to know who Goff is and who the rest of these players are when it comes time to the playoffs. Now, I love the city of Detroit. Detroit has been great to me. Shout out to Skiller Baby. Shout out to Rob49. You know, everybody in Detroit, don't hit me up. Uh, you know, don't hit me up. I love you guys. I'm just saying they have to do this in the postseason. And shout out to Bobby Brown. Y'all got to do it in the postseason. Don't hit my line telling me, did you see the Lions tell Cam? They acknowledge the Lions. They hit my phone telling me to tell Killer 
when Killer I gonna start acknowledging I get them lions. Credit. I get them credit, cause look, I don't know what lions you've been watching, Mace, but the lions ain't been shit for mad years. They just got good <laughs> last year. That's what like, I said last year. Yeah, them niggas been trash. So look, it's an upgrade for them niggas to be five <laughs> and one right now. I'm gonna give you your props. Like now, Mace holding y'all to a higher standard, and I get that because listen, it's this to me the lions are like the Texans. Y'all, mm. y'all did good last year, so niggas is like, okay, we watching you. We now. watching you now. That's I consider those two franchises in the same boat. But prior to last year, them niggas stunk it up for years. They've been having to deal with shit. But Mason's right. I'm not gonna hold you to the standard Mason's, but now your expectations is what are you gonna do in the playoffs because of the great season that you had last year. I think Dan Campbell is an outstanding coach. He motivates his players. I think Jared Goff is also upset um, for the simple fact that, let's think about it. This man got traded from, from the Rams. And they won that championship. The year he got traded. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you don't only get traded. The nigga goes to the Rams, and then they win a Super Bowl that year. So it makes it seem as you were the problem. <laughs> it makes it seem like... If we get rid of this golf nigga, it's up. Because he actually went to the Super Bowl and lost. Yeah. Jared Goff. So now you trade him for Matthew Stafford, who's a fucking outstanding quarterback, phenomenal, but he couldn't get it done in Detroit. As good as Matthew Stafford is, he couldn't get the job done. Niggas forget Megatron was up there wilding. Yeah. Heck, Megatron but, was getting yeah, crazy. But they couldn't do it, they couldn't get anything done. So you got Dan Campbell, motivation to play, motivation to a player's coach. You got Jared Goff, who niggas talking about. Yeah, they were, you was the one piece in the way from a Super Bowl for the Rams. They playing with a chip on their shoulder. Um, Jared Goff is playing outstanding. I didn't know his QBR until Arabia just said it, but he passed the six different receivers for over 25 yards. The minimum, that was the minimum mm -hmm. amount of yards. You know, Brown had 117 yards. Uh, they're playing outstanding. And listen, special teams wrapped it up because, look, as, as much as we're talking about Detroit, let's not act like Minnesota wasn't in this game. Minnesota was right there in this game. They got a great kicker. He sealed the deal. And that's what it's all about. These kickers and special teams, not just kickers, are, are really important. As much as OJ, God bless the dead, said they used to beat the kickers up and don't let the kickers practice with them niggas and say niggas are suckers, and not just OJ, God bless. A bunch of people are like, man, them niggas ain't real football players. Man, they'll be with us. We off <laughs> on the other side of the field. Like, them niggas be saving these games, nigga. Yeah. These niggas be saving these games. Or a lot of fucking uh, kickers save your niggas' cities because it ain't just about teams. You got to think cities is dependent on this. Yeah. Uh, cities is dependent on a nigga foot. So you got to give them a lot of credit. Not just, not just field goal kickers too. The niggas who punt it and put, pin you in inside the five-yard line to where you got to start on your own three-yard line. So you got 97 yards to go up the field and try and get a touchdown. Big shout out to special teams because they's the people that won the game. Uh, that's the people that won the game. Number 11 players for the, um, the Lions day before yesterday. Yeah, and I mean, another good part about the Lions, give them one good thing. They are second best when it comes to the line of scrimmage defense. When it comes down to being in the red zone, they're second in with allowing certain yards. So that's really good. Yeah. They're not over four. Mace, you picked the Vikings to win because you said Aiden's out. So there's no way they're going to win. That's what, you, that's what you and Mike Irvin said. I did say that. Yeah. That, so they telling me, <laughs> they want me to go on the why, record and ask me. That's why they mad? Yeah, that's okay, why they I mad. Yeah. That's not a bad pick with Aiden out, though. That wasn't a, that wasn't yeah. a bad pick because he, he was leading the league in sacks. So So they wanted me to ask you, if, if the Lions win, are you ready to wear silver all playoffs? I can put my platinum jewelry on. <laughs> ain't about nothing. You know what I'm saying? I do that. I do that anyway. That ain't about nothing. I, I like. Listen. Great, great comeback. Yeah, I, yeah. That ain't really no big deal. I like. I like the Lions. And listen, I'm like I said. I'm not gonna hold you to the standard Mason because I think it takes time. But that's what you and the Texans are built on right now. Y'all niggas 
made some noise the year before last. Last year, y'all made a lot of noise. They blamed Dan Campbell a lot on his coaching decisions, kept trying to go for two when you could have fucking kicked the extra point and it, and it made y'all lose. So they were saying they need to be better coaching decisions. But to Mason's point, you and the Texans, you make the playoffs, especially now you, you got a five and one record. You are held to a certain standard that it's going to count what you do in the playoffs. And I get what Mason's saying from that point. It matters now. You and the Texans, that's what matters. See that, Cam? That's all I asked for. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy now. No, I'm a, I see. I said, I get where you come from, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I said, I get it. I'm still yeah. on my yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, you, no, because listen. Yo, listen, you know how hard it is? Like the nigga, like we sitting here arguing, sin. He's mad because the Liberty won the championship, but the, the Knicks is lit. I, we don't do lit. We need to see a winner. <laughs> so I get where you're coming from. The, look, what Mason's saying is this, Detroit. You're too old to be lit. I'm, that, yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. It don't matter if you lit, nigga. What are you going to win? He don't want to hear lit. So I dig it. I dig it, man. Nigga I, been lit for a while. Yeah. I'm when you going to win, nigga? I'm going I'm to I'm say the Lions are a piece away. I don't know exactly where and maybe two years away. Listen, bro, the NFC, it's a, it's a, it's, to me, the NFC is up in the air. But you know who you got to face when, if, whether it's the, when it gets to the Super Bowl. You got Patrick Mahomes. You got Josh Allen. You got uh, who the fuck, Lamar Jackson. I ain't gonna even start Russell Wilson with yeah, y'all two niggas. I was about to say that. that. You know this conversation. I'm just saying. I was about to say that. I ain't even gonna do this. We never bring up the Steelers, right? You know this. You know this. We never bring up the Steelers. This is the same thing with the Steelers. Yeah. They keep talking about they never had a um a losing record in all these years, but. You haven't won it in years. I'm with you on that one. I'm down. I'm yeah, down with my you. My nigga, you lit. Yo, I'm down You're with you. You're too old to be lit. I, I'm 100% with the Steelers. Detroit, y'all got a little slack for these Steelers? Absolutely not. We keep celebrating. We never had a losing record. My, Mike Tomlin. Oh, he, he did it again. 500. Free lunch. <laughs> Look at Mike Tomlin. He never lost since the video. It's a man. Look at Mike Tomlin. Mike, Mike Tomlin. Yo, he listen, on the man. side Steelers line got like the this. rings, though. They yeah. got the rings. Though. Yeah, on but, the but that, like this. yeah, yeah. That's why. Yeah, but that's why I'm talking Tom, about when it comes to the Steelers. Why I gotta agree with Mace when it comes to this because you keep talking about these rings, and most of them came in the '70s with Terry Bradshaw yeah. and Lynn Swan and these niggas. If y'all got green and all, yeah, right. and then don't get me wrong. Y'all got a couple <laughs> right. with Roethlisberger and all that shit. Right. But at the end of the day, that's the stick. Listen, it's the Cowboys. It's the Steelers and it's the 49ers. Those are the teams in the NFL that are held to a high standard year in and year out, no matter what y'all niggas do. Right. That is the three franchises. If you don't Thanks. comply, I'm not I'm not one with murder. Mike Tomlin, he did another he did fucking Mike Tomlin, he, he undefeated. Yo, yo, he did 500. Yeah. And then see Mike Tomlin. I fuck with Mike Tomlin. You know why I like Mike Tomlin? I fuck with the name. First of all, he's super black. You could tell yeah. that. Yeah. And that's first and foremost. But secondly, he knows the right things to say as a professional coach. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not gonna dive into that. We'll figure out who's gonna be our our our, our, our QB one when the day comes. Mm. But they're putting in the work and practice and we'll figure it out from there. But what you're not gonna do is lead me into telling you guys who's gonna be QB one. You'll have to wait and see like the rest of us. He's a great talker. Mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin, Mike Tomlin. <laughs> nah, it's not, we're not celebrating mediocrity. No, it's it's I love that. It's, it's mediocrity. The, the Steelers have been celebrating for over 10 years. You and, hear that stat? I, I love I that hear, for you. Don't hop on the bandwagon later. I'm just saying. And you know, and you I'm know what's saying. crazy? I love that for you and Papa. Yeah, I love that for you. <laughs> 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 Papa <laughs> stat. <stack. laughs> yeah. Because because at the end of the day, as a, a the problem is with the Steelers is this. If it wasn't Mike Tomlin, and I ain't saying and, and y'all be stupid to do it, if you would get rid of Mike Tomlin. But it's two things. Who you going to get and don't let him go somewhere else and win and you mm -hmm. feel like shit because he is a great yeah. coach. Yeah, he is. So now you're sitting there stuck like, 
This nigga Mike, man, he talking about we almost there. Been four or five years since he keep talking about we almost there. But we can't get rid of the nigga because if he goes somewhere else, when we gonna feel like shit. Besides that, who we gonna have to replace? Mike Tomlin. Just stick with what you got with Mike. Because I'll tell you one thing for sure, two things for certain. Last week, Stat was questioning the reason why Mike Tomlin is even putting Russell Wilson, Wilson in. I was. Yesterday, talking about I would never go against Mike Tomlin. <laughs> I didn't no, say that. Like that. I said never I mean, again. Yeah, never he, again. Yeah, I've learned my lesson. He learns what to do. This, that, <laughs> third. I think a father called and chastised her. I don't have to go in the air. Yeah, don't ever get in that grown man business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I believe really happened, man. But shout out to Mike, and I'm rooting for you as a black man and as a great head coach. Sure. But it's mediocrity. It's mediocrity. At best. At, at best. At best. Yeah. At best. We'll see. Okay, so even though the Lions won, they actually took a loss because their wide receiver, Jameson Williams, has been suspended for two games by the NFL for violating the performance-enhancing drugs policy. This suspension is the second of his career after serving a four-game suspension last season for violating the NFL's gambling policy. So, Arabia, what do you think of him getting another suspension? Yeah, last season he faced the six game suspension and ended up ended up being reduced to four games. This year, facing a two game suspension, I would have hoped he learned from the first time and putting himself and his team in a predicament. Thankfully, upcoming he has the Titans and then they have the Packers. You would assume this Titans game will be easy to put away, but again, in the in a division like the NFC North where it's a really tight race, all four teams aren't too far away from each other. You can't afford to slack anywhere. You can't afford for any of your players to be gone, especially with something voluntary. You can't always predict injuries. You don't get injured on purpose. But something like this where you were just suspended for something different last year, now it's something else, is just like, you know, maybe a young guy mistake, him learning from his mistakes. But you can't afford this. And after a while, teams are going to start looking at this like, is this guy a problem? Yes, he may be talented on the field, but against the Vikings, he had one reception for negative four yards. I saw somebody say if he is taking performance enhancing drugs, he's not taking it right because against the Vikings, he wasn't necessarily that effective. So I don't necessarily think this is an end all be all for him, but I do think that as a young man, he does have to start learning from some of these off field mistakes that directly affect him on the field. And I hope that he just takes this as a final lesson and applies it moving forward. Forward. What what enhancement did he take? They don't know what enhancement he took yet. He's still being checked for what they're gonna when they're gonna release it. I took that, that honey with the horsepower. He took the honey. <laughs> My shit legal. And then after <laughs> he said he has... took pink horsepower. Nah, don't put that out there on us. If you, you could drink pink horsepower and play. Yeah, he would have got, he'd got extra lady. yards. Yeah. And they then, hate <laughs> even though they didn't release the full details after he said he has no choice but to take it on the chin. So, nah, he ain't admit it. But he... Was it in his, his steak? Hey, man. <laughs> you know, these don't days. don't say they, that. Like, I don't. <laughs> he said it was, in the, it was in the steak, you know. Didn't, um, the boxer, the boxer say that. Um, Canelo, right? That it was in the meat. Hey, yo. Pause. That was crazy. <laughs> wow. Falco in the meat was crazy. Pause. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, wow. Yes, wow. <laughs> Suspended two wow. games. <laughs> in the meat. <laughs> <laughs> steroid joint. It's crazy. It's just, um, I was just about to say that before you said that shit, though, to be totally honest with you. Once you on that shit and I, and it's determined you on that shit, I don't fuck with you no more. Like, Canelo's one of the a great, skillful fighter, but I can't, I can't. You got yeah. caught. And then, see, you know my problem is, niggas go with the, it was in his food, it was in his steak. Why don't be a Floyd steak? Like, why don't be his first nigga steak? Like, why is it always... Mexican steak? Yeah, but it's mad Mexicans. Was it in Marquez steak? Like, <laughs> was it in Julio Cesar Chavez steak? <laughs> it's always in somebody's steak and corn. It's certain niggas that know the right steak to get. Hey, look, let me tell you right now if a nigga be like, yo. Try this new steak. It's going to give you mad energy in your time to train. 
I'm telling you, man, <laughs> this is the one. Like, oh, yeah, I feel different. Then you blame the chef, but the nigga give it to you like this. <laughs> Cut that, it up. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> nigga said, you know, nigga bring you your plate and they sit your shit down like this. Nigga say, no, no, no. That one goes over here. This is the right. They know what they do when they eat that shit. I don't fuck with you once you start. You, get, you know why? Because football too, boxing especially, but football too. These is these is these are sports. You know, it's not even like basketball. Yeah, you hurting niggas. You are hurting niggas, bro. Yeah. You could potentially lose your life or be injured for the rest of your life behind these sports. And you doing shit to hurt niggas more? Nah, I can't I can't rock with niggas after that, bro. You know, baseball, I'm a little lenient. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't really trying to hurt niggas like that. They just trying to hit as many home runs as they can. Boxing and football. Is is the pain business? What you said, just son say. He in the pain he, business. He in the pain. <laughs> this is the pain business, nigga. It's just exactly. You can't do that shit. I, I don't. I don't know. Then you told me you got caught gambling. What kind of court gambling? Yo, listen. They, see, that's what I'm saying. He NFL, probably was betting when he was geeked up, pause, and he thought he was going to win, so he, <laughs> he put the money on him and it didn't yeah. kick in until after the game. Well, <laughs> he was betting, but on non-NFL games. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, man. You see, see this, this, and I'm not promoting this, That's man. the storyline, though. That's how the storyline get crazy, when you're gambling and you geeked up. No, I ain't disagreeing with you. What I'm saying, what I, my point was about to be was that and I'm not comparing because I don't want nobody out forever. But this is shit Adam Silver be nipping in the butt. Michael Porter Jr. brother gambling ain't even played no games yet. Suspended for your gear forever. Yeah. Go figure it out in Australia. Stop. <laughs> That's what he told him. He got suspended. He ain't even getting the league yet. He said, go figure it out in Kuwait. Killer, did you hear what Gino, G, um, what's his name? One of the ball brothers said about you? Yeah, yeah, I seen Hello. that. Gino. Yeah, I seen that. He said he said that he's still good. Only song you know from me is "Suck It or Not." Uh, I could rap, but then he said he could play. He could play both. Stat sent it to me. I did. And then uh, he said, "Thank you for giving him his props." So he said, "Only thing you know from me for is "Suck It or Not." Pause. And I'm like, I only know you because your father's a great marketer, nigga. I wouldn't know you for it wasn't for Lamar, Lavar Ball. That's the only reason I know you, nigga. And, and listen, if you can ball, I wish you the best of luck. He said it's politics. It's politics. It's politics. That's politics? the reason why he, he's not playing. Why his brother's playing? They in politics? I'm trying to figure out what's the, <laughs> what's the, what's the reason the yeah. brother's is playing. Yeah. <laughs> Shout <laughs> out to G, with Gino. Jello. Jello. You don't even know the nigga name. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know LeVar name? LeVar Master Shout Marker. Shout out I, to Jello. I, I fuck with the nigga LeVar B. That nigga's a marker, ma marketing master, man. And he had two sons that he was right about. And Jello. Jello? Yes, Jello yeah. Ball. Jello, look, I ain't got no problem with you. I just got to call it like I see it. You're lucky Trump was in China. You might have cut your fingers off over there stealing sunglasses, nigga. He's over there stealing, nigga. Sure, You're a that purse is. snatcher, nigga. What the fuck is you talking about, man? Niggas <laughs> caught you stealing glasses in China, man. How good are you? You're over there stealing glasses. Lucky Trump was over there when you did the shit he made for all your niggas be bugging. You know, let this nigga uh, go. Chill, killer. That's a Je fact. Jello <laughs> is family. That ain't a fact. I'm bugging. <laughs> Look at <laughs> no, no, leave it alone. That's that's rough. No, tell me, am I am I, the, am I remembering the wrong thing? No, you're right. So what the fuck? <laughs> this ain't the show to chill out. No, no y'all niggas, we done like got watered down around here. We <laughs> 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 just got watered down. <laughs> got watered down around here, man. You right, you right. Yeah. <laughs> Gloves are back on. <laughs> Nigga, what would you think? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they got over there. This ain't what got us to where we got. <laughs> what the fuck you think you talking about? Chill out. The nigga got caught in China stealing glasses <laughs> with, his high school, with his team. Hey, glasses is only three cents away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think about it. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? It's so much cheaper in China. Yeah, exactly. Oh, what the fuck are we talking about? We, I know him from the glasses. <laughs>
So if you could take glasses, take a spot, nigga. Yeah, exactly, my nigga. <laughs> Nigga's a pickpocket. Nigga's a pickpocket. <laughs> Get still. Nigga's a pickpocket. Nigga's pick on the court. Get still. Nigga's a pickpocket. What the fuck is going on, man? What the fuck are you talking about? Nigga, yeah, you're right. Nigga's got watered down. Nigga's <laughs> <laughs> got watered down. <laughs> I'm fucking, back on the team. Yeah, yeah. Static. <laughs> 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 What's wrong with Static? <laughs> What have we been doing up here, man? Yeah. What the fuck is we doing? We ain't get here yeah. like that. Yeah, man. The nigga said, he, yeah. listen, to me, he didn't really, he didn't really, did he said he, he only know that song, but I'm dissing you. <laughs> you're not as good as you think because if you're good, they find a way, politics or no politics. Mm. And when you're good, they'll figure it out. And I'm not saying you ain't better than me, but you ain't better than Melo. <laughs> And yeah, and I don't know about Lonzo. We gotta see him when he gets back. But Lonzo's a very yeah. Lonzo's a a a a great a great NBA point guard. They found a way to put um, Draymond Green back on the court. Mm -hmm. They found a way to bring Ja Morant back. Yes, they they. If you're good enough, they found a way. Yes, exactly. And they had pistols and all type of shit. And yeah. they, you just stole some sunglasses. They even <laughs> found a way to put. Our test back on the court. Mm. Yes. Steven Jackson after mm. the, the after the, the brawl. Yeah, nigga, bro, nigga, bro, I'm back, back nigga. nigga. Fuck you, I'm back. Fuck you, I don't know what yeah. happened to yeah. Steven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Niggas is back. Yeah. 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 What are you doing, nigga? <laughs> 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 oh, fuck, chill. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's, what, that's what I need up here. <laughs> you fell back, man. I thought it was over. I seen you playing golf. I said, you're murder doing the man life shit like that. <laughs> I, said, I said, murder, he don't want to do this shit. Nigga got a life. He got a nice life, man. <laughs> he got a nice we life. We back on nigga sports, yeah. nigga. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Stat. Well, I have nothing else to add to that. Arabia, thanks for being here. Thank you for having Arabia, me. Arabia, thank you. Arabia. And listen, thank you so much for letting me know that onside kick shit. Nobody gave me no answers. Not only that, the information you bring every year, you very much appreciate it up here. Thank you so much. And we time. Thank you for having me so much. Yes. Y'all make sure to go follow All32 NFL. We're going to go to break. When we return, we will discuss the NBA season. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, we back, nigga. <laughs> 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 Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog picks of the day. NBA season is back today. The Knicks will play the Celtics. Whoa. Underdog has Jason Tatum at 26 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Mm, higher, higher. Even though the light-skinned boy, you know, he got things to say about me. Yo, we gonna bro, go high. Hey, bro, everybody mm. said they love you, man. Oh, Specifically okay. him. Yeah. Like he's a big fan. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, man. All right, you know. You just said you got to You love know, I'm unforgivable. Mace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, he, he showed you love, man. He just yeah, said nah, Titan nah. Town in Boston. No, I'm saying this is gonna be a crazy game because it is. all the excuses is out the window. Yeah. yeah. Sin, if you're watching this. All excuses are out the window. This is game one. We don't have to wait a week. We're going to know on the first night who the Knicks are. Yeah. And to be honest with you, um, they don't have Porzingis. 
So you got Carl Anthony Towns now, so we should really see how this goes. To, mm. to be honest with you, with this uh, lineup that the Knicks have at the star five, I don't know if they're favorites or not, but they actually probably should be. They better not lose. I know that. Considering Porzingis isn't playing, but Knicks are plus five. Yeah, plus five. Knicks are plus five. Yeah. Yep. So we'll in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. So That's Boston's crazy. my favorite. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's go crazy, Tatum. Go crazy. I'm, I got you for more than that. No, what they say, what, what they saying is Boston's favorite, right? Yeah, no, yeah Boston is favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ring, uh, historically speaking, ring ring nights, they usually don't play well. Right. I mean, just historically, betting wise, it, right? Champions don't play well. They get the rings and yeah, because everybody's all celebratory and the point. other team is yeah. pissed yeah. off. Thinking, yeah. yo, these niggas try to do ring night on us. On, on a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, we got yeah, I feel that a hundred percent. Um, what's the act, Jason? Twenty six and a half points. I'm gonna go lower. Okay, Jalen Brown's at six and a half first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower? I think he's the one they got something to prove. Even For though sure. he's the finals MVP, the playoffs MVP, I don't think he likes the way Nike treated him. I don't think the like. He got the snub for club, um, club, for Team USA this summer. I seen a couple highlights of him in the preseason, and he was acting crazy <laughs> like it was the regular season. I'm going to go high, higher. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just the first quarter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give him higher. I think he's coming to attack when he gets in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, higher. Hey, Jalen Brunson's at 38 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have higher lower mm. pace? That's a difficult one. I'm going to go. 38? Yep. Oh. What's, 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 yeah, what's the 38 company? and a half points, rebounds, and assists. I'm going to go with lower, too, because you know what it is? We seen Jalen Brunson go for 60 last year. 40, 30 on numerous occasions, but he had to. I don't think he has he to, to do with it that right, team. right now with this team presently constructed. That they don't, that he doesn't have to. But the one thing that we do know is that his father's an assistant coach, so that green light is always available <laughs> when he's available. I don't know if you see Murder when they played uh, Minnesota in the preseason, yeah. and his oh yeah, we talked about him, yeah, well, <laughs> and his father got into it with D. Vincenzo. So yeah, uh, that green light is is special when when your father's on the bench too. So I'm gonna definitely go lower though. Okay. If you like these picks, remember you always get a free pick if you're not already on Underdog, so make sure to support the show. Sign up now, and you can make your picks too. So it's a great year for Jalen's. Jalen Green, Jalen Johnson, and Jalen Suggs all signed multi-million dollar contract extensions. Rockets' Jalen Green agreed to a three-year, $106 million rookie contract extension. He is the first NBA player to successfully negotiate a two-plus-one rookie extension on a 9 figure deal mace what do you think of this unique deal jalen green just saw? i'm happy for i'm happy for drea <laughs> i am i'm really happy you know the players are up the players are up you know <laughs> it's like the a team i love it when a plan comes together you know yeah. she did her part she stayed down to niggas come up, you know. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Philadelphia in the house, you know. Shout out to the players, man. What you got to say? <laughs> <laughs> I got to do some more homework on this contract. Um, I'm, I'm trying to skim through it now. I got I to gotta do some more research. But to me... I don't know if I would have did this. We already know what kind of player Jalen Green is. Uh, exciting. Uh, he had kind of a breakout season last season where people starting to recognize his name and not saying they're going to forget about what James Harden did down there with Houston because that was just an amazing stretch that he had in Houston. But he started making a name for themselves almost today. was actually almost in the play. Uh, they folded against Golden State to where they didn't make it. But they had a lot of exciting... Uh, games last year and it's because of Jalen Green. This contract I don't know if I would have signed it. Collective bargaining agreements coming on. The salary cap is going up. 
if this is a good deal, then it's a good deal. But to me, if his contract is almost over, I don't know how many more years he had, but they said it's a rookie extension. Yeah. They trying to get you, nigga. Just hold out. Because <laughs> you could be one of them niggas that end up signing for $320 million instead of taking an extension of $106 million. Now, I don't know. I'm not saying doing math because I have no knowledge on how this deal actually worked out. And I know they try to, what they try to do is, just from what I'm hearing, I'm, like I said, I don't want people like, Cam, you want to talk about I only heard it from stat reading it. I didn't know he was going to talk about this. But what I hear is niggas playing word games with me. When niggas start talking about, he's the first one with a nine-digit deal for a Nigga, Jason Tame just got 360, nigga. Steph gets 62 in a season, nigga. Like, yo, stop playing the nine-digit game with me, nigga. <laughs> They've been, they been giving out nine digits. This ain't, this ain't a nine-digit thing. And we going to start getting into the upper 200, 200 uh, millions to 300 millions. Listen. He's going to be a franchise player. Is his potential going to make him be that? But right now, I'm not sure. But Houston, that's how Houston's looking at him. If it's a good deal for you, it's a good deal for you. I wouldn't have took it, but especially seeing what niggas is getting. Yeah. And then to your point real quick, Drea, Drea is clearly excited too. She posted the post with the extension and put, congrats, term short, money long. So that's mm. <laughs> Put the, cam put the camera on Killer. Look at that. <laughs> the players are up, Killer. The players are up or the players play? Or the players. Are, uh, the who's the players? The females or the guys? <laughs> Which Girls players is talking? players too. Yeah. 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 That's players a fact. Too. That's crazy. Yo, you know why? And You know, for the kids. Child sport, all that, you know. Well, it seems like they still together. I see them walking around, but you know, you know what you. This is this, is, and I don't know Dre. I know her from we met. I don't know her. No. You know what this is, man. And I feel, I feel this, man. What is that? And I'm not gonna say this actually, Dre, but I'm just saying one of them drinks like. You did so much shit with different people, and you still got the right one. And I'm not going to fuck this one up because I had my fun already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 40. I did everything I needed to do with everybody I need to do it. End up with a 22-year-old contract extension. I, I ain't mad at them. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't mad at them. But, you, but see, this is what I'm saying too, Murder. Why well, say that? <laughs> you know, put that out. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When niggas when, like yeah, us yeah, watching. Yeah, exactly. When nigga, when nigga, niggas watching. Turn short, money long. That's crazy. <laughs> that, <is laughs> that ain't crazy to That's say. It is crazy. But she's probably Yo, talking. Like, 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 that, that she's probably like, talking to crazy. one of the ex athletes that she dated that she told. I don't care. It don't matter. That's, that's <laughs> a short deal. Stat, what do you think? Y'all know this? I'm the first one to be like, you know, but nah, this is crazy. Like, just hush. <laughs> like, yeah. that's just just hush. Right. You already right. have a lot going. Thank you already you. have a lot going on. The situation already is confusing people. Do what makes you happy. Happy for y'all, but hush. Thank That's you. just how I feel. You. Yo, hold up, hold up. Okay, Stan, you back. You back. <laughs> feeling it today a you little bad. bit. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, she back. Like, you please. back, Stan. And not even just her, we like, a lot hush, of things. Please, hush. Yeah. How are you doing, like, a white girl? Stan, do it again. Hush. <laughs> but not Thanks even just her. Yeah. Not even just her. Like, a lot of these girls, and yeah. this is coming from me. I know I'm young. I know y'all are going to say, you have a lot more to learn. Cool, whatever. A lot of y'all don't need to say the things that y'all say. Just keep your business private. Do what you got to do. If your point is to get to the bag or maybe you're in love, go do that. But the whole world doesn't got to know that, you know, just do the your thing, thing about it privately. I, yeah. I, I look, I was in a public relationship or, or on social media, whatever. They are in your business all the time when you have a public relationship. Because thing is this, it may be nothing wrong in your relationship, but they'll sit there and say, I ain't see you post her in a little minute. Mm -hmm. Well, what's going on? I ain't see him post you, la, da, 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 and then all this other shit. Damn if you with another girl, who is that? That's not her. It's my cousin, people. What the <laughs> fuck? Like, that shit is annoying. <laughs> so as much as you can keep it private, I advise you, unless you're ready, 
unless you're ready for scrutiny. Because listen, speak, I'm telling you, you don't have to do nothing wrong to the female. I'm talking, talking to my niggas real quick. You don't have to do nothing wrong to the female. You didn't have to cheat. You didn't have to hit her. You didn't have to do anything wrong. Could have just, Tom could have just played his course and it's over. When it's over, you are a sucker. It don't matter. <laughs> it's just the way it go. You ain't do nothing wrong. Ain't nothing happened. You, you actually turn niggas into celebrities and all type. You're still a sucker. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to let you know that. So you fellas who all happy and think that you that you, you're promoting your, your girl that you got and, and then you get sick of her, it's gonna be all bad for you, nigga. If you if even if you ain't do nothing wrong. If you ain't got elephant skin like me, nigga, it'd be tough, nigga. You just, nigga like me don't really care. What makes, I can't tell you how much I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm past that. (laughs) You feel me? So, yeah. Some niggas care. (laughs) One of the day. Okay, so let's get into our early season predictions. Who do you guys predict will be the best team in the East versus the West? Who would be your top choice? Mace, let's start with you. Mm, I'm gonna go next. Okay. I know it's contradictive <laughs> what I just said, but <laughs> well, <laughs> for the sake bit. of television, the Knicks. I'm going next. Okay. On the West too. What do you got for the West? On the West. West. <laughs> um, I'm going Bronny and the Lakers. Wow. <laughs> You nah, just, I'm trolling. You, I'm about to say you're trolling. <laughs> nah, let me stop. On the West, I'm going Denver. You crazy? They got Russell Westbrook. And now they got, you know, they that's the piece they needed to fill that spot. Pause. With the, um, with Bruce, whoever Bruce was. <laughs> Bruce Brown. Yeah, Brown. to that <laughs> team. <clears throat> I like Denver for the West. I'm not mad at that pick. Uh, I want to see what Memphis does if they stay healthy. Mm. If Memphis stays healthy, I want to see what they do. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Um, Denver got Sir. I mean, um, Minnesota got Sir Mix a lot. Yeah. Um, look, they've been talking about Denver. They've been talking about Minnesota. Um, New Orleans with the addition of Murray. Wait, I want to change my pick. Okay. I'm going Memphis. I'm going Memphis. Yeah. Ja with Edie Paws look crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it does. Yep. What about Dallas? I was just about to say I wasn't finished. I was saying that, you know, we still got to remember Dallas wasn't picked to go to um, the championship last year, but they found their way there. But I believe, I'm in my heart, I'm saying Denver and Memphis, but – Shea Gildress and the niggas, okay, man. Number yeah. one seed. <clears throat> number one seed. They keep forgetting about that quiet town down there, Oklahoma City, man. <laughs> so Oklahoma City for the West is my pick, even though I like what May said with Denver and Memphis as well. I'm, I'm, I, my personal favorite would be De- Memphis to see. And on the East, I'm going with Boston. I'm going with Boston. I think that Boston has the best camaraderie, the best chemistry. I think it's a perfect scenario, depending on where they finish at at Christmas, to get Porzingis back around that time. Because we all know Porzingis can't play a full season. He hasn't done it in his whole career. Mm-hmm. And if you balance him out and start his uh, season in December, January, and you, he's a person who really needs load management because he wants to play. And you figure out how to balance that out through the playoffs, I'm going with Boston. But I'm not mad at the Knicks pick either. Yeah. I went. I went New York because I thought about Boston and not just like, not just um, Tatum, but thinking about once Jalen Brown wins the MVP, it changes the dynamic of how we have to come back and approach the team. And I don't know if they're ready to um, make that adjustment. Well, yeah. Listen, man. One thing for sure. Two things for certain. I like the way the Knicks are looking. They are definitely trending in the right direction, but it's a bunch of people that don't like the story line and people talking about the Knicks. Look, the Knicks are going to be talked about. As much as the Knicks have not won in the last 54 years, they were actually the richest franchise in basketball until Golden State passed them. So they're the second richest franchise in basketball and haven't won a championship 
in 51 years. So there can't the New Yorkers can't wait for them to actually win a championship. But you know, uh, Philly, I have something to say about it. I believe that. Uh, Milwaukee is upset about them actually Milwaukee's actually upset about them getting snubbed they didn't even make a Christmas game this year so they're upset like you know if you them niggas you supposed to play on Christmas Milwaukee's not playing on Christmas and they have an attitude about it let's see what the Greek freak uh, has to say about it Damian Lillard you told us you went through a lot of personal stuff last year uh, I'm pretty sure you don't like yeah, niggas forgot all yeah, about that's, it yeah, yeah so <laughs> We'll see why that's what happens. New hotness. Yeah. <laughs> Jalen Brunson, new hotness, and niggas forget about it. But you got to think about do they like that? Do the Damian Lillards of the world, do not just the Damian yeah. Lillards, do the Donovan Mitchells of the world like this? Hmm. You got to think about. So you're thinking he's like Detroit? It, like niggas know about him now? They're going to play Jaylen him Brunson. differently now that they know about him. Jalen Brunson made second team All NBA last year, and coming into the season this year, they have him as the eighth best player in the NBA. They're right; they know about him. Mm, yeah, you're absolutely right; they know about him, and he's on niggas' radar. But I think that he he'll sustain and he'll be good because it's almost like a a Steph Curry, and, I, and it's actually a little better to where you know Steve Kerr let Steph Curry do whatever you want. When you got a father assistant coaching. Yeah, it's like your dad coaching AAU. Exactly. Mm. exactly. Nigga going, getting all the shots. Yeah, they do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, in the comments below, let us know you guys' predictions. But that is all the time that we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. <laughs>